Okay, we are now going to talk about some application problems um, involving the law of sines. You're going to use the law of sines to solve these application problems. I'm going to split this up into two different videos. So this first one will be um, just using the law of sines. And then the second one are going to be some problems that involve the bearings, um, which is like when you're dealing with um, airplanes or maybe sailing ships. It's a way of measuring the direction using an angle, the direction of the airplane or the ship. Okay, so this one will just be some general applications. The next video will be ones involving bearings. Um, so this one says the Sanchez Irrigation is installing a lawn irrigation system with three heads, and they found that it's best to place them at these three points. They label one A, B, and then C. They label the three points that. And then here's a diagram. So the three points are arranged. So you have a 40 degree angle here, a 38 degree angle there. And then it asks if the distance from A to B is 34 feet here. Then they want to know what's the distance from B to C. Okay. And so we'll put an X there. And they want to know what X is. Okay, so sometimes they just give you the problem without a diagram, and you got to figure this stuff out. I actually took this one from the textbook. I think it was number 24 in the textbook, and they gave the diagram. And in that case, then, with the diagram, it's very straightforward. It's pretty much a law of signs problem, right? Finding the missing side. There's angle, angle, side. You're finding this missing side over here. So, um, we're going to use the law of sines then. Um, so, this side here is opposite the 40 degrees. So, I could say x is to the sine of 40 degrees as the 34 is to the sine of 38 degrees. And then I can solve for x. like that and that should give me the length from B to C and this says 35.5 feet okay so if this is 34 feet this is 35.5 feet and that actually makes good sense here because this angle is a little bigger than that angle. So this side should be a little bit bigger than that side because the wider the angle, the bigger the side, right? So that's a pretty simple, straightforward one. So now let me do one that's a little trickier. Oops. And it's similar to one that's in the homework that I gave you. Um, so this is a wedge, and I tried to do this. This is like a three-dimensional picture. So it has a diagonal piece here, and maybe made out of a block of wood or something. And it wants to know what the diagonal is from this corner here to this corner right down there. This is the opposite. This is the one nearest us, and this is the lower back corner further away from us. And it, so this diagonal is going three dimensionally through the, the wood, okay? And it wants to know what is the length of that diagonal. Now it gives us these angles, right? It gives us that, that the diagonal to the base here makes a 48 degree angle. And then it also tells me that this wedge here to the base is a 32 degree angle. So it gives me these angles, okay? Um, and then it gives me the length. This is 22 feet. This is 12 feet. And so it wants to know that. So there's this actually is going to have a couple steps here. Okay, you're going to need to find this diagonal because you need you actually have this triangle that's like three in three dimensions. Okay, and you have two of the angles. You need at least one side. And we're going to be able to get this side right here using these. Now this doesn't look like a right angle, but it is. Uh, it's just a three-dimensional drawing. 
So this is like a right angle. And so we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find this. We'll call that X. And so basically, it's like you have a triangle like this, where you have 22 feet, 12 feet, and then this is X. This would be looking down, right, at the base from above. And you want to find this here. So you got 12 squared plus 22 squared is equal to x squared. So x squared is equal to 12 squared plus 22 squared. That's like 628. And then I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So raise that to the half power. I get like 25.05. So we could say like 25.1 if I round to the nearest tenths place. So this is like 25.1. And now I have this triangle. And I got two sides in a I got an angle side angle and now I can use the law of sines to find this and so basically I'm going to need to know this angle so I'm going to do 180 minus 48 minus 32 and it looks like this is a hundred degrees here so what I have here is that I want to get this diagonal and that is to 32 degrees, or to the sine of 32 degrees, as this side here, that di that's actually a diagonal of the base, is to the sine of 100 degrees. So I have that, so now D is equal to 25.1 sine of 100 times sine of 32 degrees. twenty five point one divided by whoop twenty five point one divided by sine of a hundred degrees times sine of thirty two degrees and I get like approximately thirteen point five feet so this diagonal here is thirteen point five feet. And that's what it was asking for. What is the what is the diagonal? What is the diagonal of the wedge? Okay. And notice with this you can find all kinds of other dimensions here. I think you can pretty much find all of the dimensions. So given the base, the two sides of the base and these angles, I think from that you can get everything else. So, um kind of a, a neat problem there so and it's multi-stepped in this case you got to use I use the Pythagorean theorem to find so you, uh, you can use some you already know to find information that you need to use the law of signs to find uh, the final answer okay um, so and the one you have I think is a little different I think you end up with two sides and an angle and then it asks you to find the diagonal. So, so those are a couple examples of using the law of signs. So now what we'll do in the final video here is do some examples where we're going to solve problems involving um, bearings.